Thanks. Hey, and welcome back. Sorry for the delay between videos, but I've been hard at work and also on vacation. In the last video, I showed you how to disable the CPU boost on your laptop to be able to lower heat and noise. And also, in many cases with new laptops, you're also creating additional power headroom for the GPU. So today we're going to be looking at how to undervolt your GPU to be able to improve performance, lower heat and lower noise as well. I will go through the entire process and I also want to show you two of my favorite uh, options which is one ultra low power scenario and also one performance scenario which still uses less power than the stock settings whilst having better performance. Let's go! So, before starting to undervolt, we're going to need some applications. The first and most crucial one is MSI Afterburner. This is the tool we're able to, to change the core clocks and also the, the memory clocks. Apart from that, we're also going to need a better tool to be able to, to measure all the, the performance statistics of the GPU. And the GPU-C is a favorite one for many. It's a dedicated GPU uh, measuring tool. However, I am preferential to hardware info instead, mainly because it's able to capture all the statistics of the system uh, and not just the GPU, but uh, to each his own and uh, compare and find your favorite application for this. Uh, apart from that, we're also going to need some st stability testing software and uh, I would recommend uh, having benchmark as the first one and the go-to so this is going to be running in the background while we play around with the voltage curves and uh, once you're done with uh, your voltage curve and wants to, to proceed I would also suggest downloading and testing um, super precision as a second stopgap before actually going into games that you're regularly playing to see if it's stable because this will only give a inclination and a first pass in terms of stability but um, I have been experienced many times where it's stable in these two softwares but once you go into a demanding title such as uh, Witcher 3 for example Shadow of Tomb Raider, uh, Cyberpunk the, the stable underworld or overclock that you that you thought you had uh, you, you no longer have because it, it comes crashing down so these are the first two steps and then play around with the games that you have and be prepared to uh, lower your performance enhancements a bit just to be able to make sure that it runs smoothly because you want to set this and forget it rather than keep trying to play around with it. It's really fun to, to start playing around with it but you will uh, become bored just a, a few days after it. So make sure that you, you can leave some performance on the table just to ensure that uh, it's running perfectly stable instead. The car that I'm going to be undervolting is the RTX 3050 using my Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro X AMD version. So once we have Heaven Benchmark up and running, uh, it's time to get the data regarding the GPU clock and GPU core voltage, the, the maximum figures, because this will be the starting point when looking at the, the GPU's voltage curve. And uh, as we can see in the GPU clock, it's currently around the 1600, uh, 1650 to uh, 1700. It's uh, yeah, just momentarily topped out at 1725 and um, the maximum core voltage that we've seen is 0.9 voltages and just from looking at this for an extended period of time i know that this is the, the maximum cap that the the card is um, allowed to draw and we can see it, it ranges between 0.85 to, to um, 0.9 but this is in heaven benchmark and this is not a very taxing program and when looking for example in cyberpunk or other very demanding games it's never able to draw the maximum 0.9 voltages because the, the power budget isn't just there so the, the first step was to be able to reduce the power draw from the cpu to be able to boost the gpu further but but still it's uh, struggling to be able to reach that maximum level of uh, 0.9 voltage so uh, what we're going to do is go into afterburner we see the core clock and the memory clock is currently at zero and just by hitting ctrl f 
we get the voltage and frequency curve editor and uh, here we can see the, the the curve that the GPU has so each point here corresponds to a, a voltage budget and the, the core frequency that the card is to hit. So for example looking at um, 900 millivolts we can see that the, the the, the target is 1725 megahertz and uh, yeah it, we see a curve beyond this but seeing as this is the cap uh, we won't ever be able to go past this in the current configuration or I think uh, not at all uh, due to the bias of this uh, card but um, look for your own card and try to see your own limits and uh, the, the main idea here, both in terms of overclocking, overclocking can be done either by increasing the voltages, but it can also be done by trying to push the, the megahertz frequency higher for each voltage level that we have. Something that you might be asking yourself, unless you already know it, uh, is why do we need to do this? Uh, Nvidia and uh, AMD are both very uh, talented and uh, experienced high tech companies why do we need to fine-tune the GPUs? Why, why haven't they done it already? And uh, the, the main answer to that is uh, chip quality and uh, the, the lottery as well, the silicon lottery. Um, and when they tune the GPUs, they always tune it for the, the, the lowest common denominator. So they, they will find a base level which they find is acceptable, for example the 4050 and find that this performance is uh, sufficient for the 3050. And then they will always set this curve so that all cords, uh, regardless of the silicon quality, will be able to hit this curve. And that means that unless you, you're actually the, the one person who gets the, the worst performing card, uh, even so, you will still have a small margin because they never want this to crash, but rather they tune it down so they have a comfortable margin to ensure that everything works properly. So um, that's the main reason to why the curve is as it is and why it's actually lower than it needs to be. And uh, everyone doing this will have a different situation. So some will have a much, uh, much better quality than I have, so they will be able to, to uh, reach higher clock frequencies with lower uh, millivolts for example but th that's the main reason as to why the curve looks like this and it doesn't look like uh, this to begin with which for example now is working perfectly fine for, for my GPU and I, I actually think it's quite fun because you will have something more to do to play around with um, in terms of performance you'll, you'll be, you will be able to get the performance boost but especially you're able to, to scale down the, the power uh, which is fantastic for laptops I, I always do this with my desktop uh, setups as well and the process for doing this on a laptop and a desktop is identical and in the case of this computer for example uh, we know that it's struggling to reach this 900 uh, millivolt target, but rather ranges between 850, 875, even goes down to 800 or 700 uh, in some games. So um, my main goal is to be able to find a, a, um, a target where the voltages are reduced but the, the core frequency is retained. So we don't lose any performance, rather we gain it because it will be easier for, for the laptop and for the graphics card to hit that target. And um, the, the primary way of doing this is by going down in increments of uh, 25 millivolts. So you do it step by step, you, you make sure that the, the card is stable, at least just looking at the heaven benchmark, until you actually reach the floor where the, the card becomes unstable, uh, you crash, your, your um, um, computer reboots or something like that. One important thing is <laughs> I am not responsible for anything that goes wrong, but let me assure you by saying that we're not pushing anything in terms of power, we're not in a, a, any risk of damaging the computer because what we're doing, we're actually trying to get uh, the, the card to accept a lower uh, power target for a um, um, performance level. So you're not extending any limits, but rather just trying to, to make the card um, perform more efficiently. So 
the worst thing that, that can happen is that you get a crash and a reboot. Uh, if you get a uh, slighter crash, <laughs> you, you will not get a reboot, but rather the, the card will just reset and go back to stock configuration. Um, if you're doing this with AMD, I think that you're going to, to be doing uh, a lot more rebooting because uh, just from experience, uh, the Radeon cards are a bit more sensitive. So um, Nvidia's cards has a tendency of being able to recover more quickly. So you will still be able to, to get back on the horse without doing a reboot. But enough talk. Um, I'm trying to um, make this as uh, swift as possible. So. My recommendation is take it in steps of uh, 25. So for example, we currently have uh, 1725 megahertz for 900. Start by us going down to uh, 875 or perhaps at the beginning 850 and then going in steps of 25 millivolts to see if it's stable. So taking the, the example of 850, we simply select the dot for 850 that's currently stated uh, to, to achieve 1620 megahertz so let's just push that up to 725 something in that range uh, what you can do then is hold down shift and then press down the left mouse button you will then select all the subsequent points and then this can be a bit finicky, but I reassure you it's much more efficient rather than trying to pull down each uh, dot as we go along. So uh, when you've done this, hold down shift again and then hit enter. And we should be getting all the lines to stack up, but it doesn't always succeed. Uh, I have a few suggestions, there we go, uh, for MSI Afterburner and also <laughs> Nvidia to be able to, to make this process a bit more smooth. Um, but uh, once you've done this, uh, simply hit confirm and you can see that the point moved slightly uh, and um, that's also very common so uh, you, you're not going to be able to hit that exact frequency um, mainly due to the voltage curve adapts to the temperature of the GPU, so uh, be prepared for a deviation of around uh, 20 to uh, 10 to 20 uh, megahertz when, when doing this task. So make sure that you have headroom to be able to, to go 20 megahertz above your set limit without crashing. Um, what we can see now uh, in Heaven Benchmark is that uh, it seems to be stable. We are now running at 1710 megahertz at 850 millivolts. And we're now able to sustain this level rather than jumping up and down and going uh, down to 1600 megahertz range uh, at this or even a higher voltage level. So this is the core principle when doing the undervolting. We're trying to achieve as high clocks as possible whilst giving the, the card as little voltage uh, to, to work with as possible without, uh, without crashing. And uh, for my uh, one of my scenarios that I have, uh, I've played around with this a bit. Um, oh, I can also show you, because as you can see now, um, all the previous dots are still in place. And this is a common mistake that many people do. And absolutely, you get your, your point at the end value that you want to have. But in uh, situations where you're not, not able to provide 850 millivolts to the GPU, which uh, can be quite often in the laptops, then you're still going to be suffering from uh, lower, um, clocks, um, lower clocks than, than, um, than you would like. So a way of um, combating this is um, just to restart and uh, I can actually now show you if you want to deselect this area hold down shift again and then press with your um, cursor in the far right of the field just to clear it. So to show you the, the better way of adjusting the voltage curve uh, I will now use the scenario that I have as 
one of my saved configurations and this is uh, my performance setting while still using lower power. So I have selected 800 millivolts and uh, I'm almost able to, to hit the level that I would like. And um, again, hold down shift now, select the, the point that you would like and then drag it up and you can see that all the corresponding points are also moving with them so you will retain the, the, the curve as it was before but at a higher level so I'm going to go ahead and push this up to 1710 uh, megahertz and then do the same process of selecting all the other ones hitting down shift and enter And we're now at 1710 and when I press confirm look at that we're still here so what we can see now is that we're now able to, to hit the, the near maximum frequency uh, from the, the standard configuration but instead of paying with 900 millivolts we're just paying 800 millivolts and we see that we went down from around 55 watts down to 44 watts so a, a roughly 10%, 10 watts uh, reduction or 20% reduction in power usage while still having the same performance or rather better because it's much easier for the laptop to deliver 800 millivolts to the, lap, uh, to the GPU instead of 900 millivolts. So overall a great improvement without sacrificing any performance uh, whatsoever, rather increasing performance whilst having a cooler and more quiet laptop. This is one of my main configuration. I use this configuration when I want um, good performance or rather the, the maximum performance. We, we can very easily also go ahead and overclock it uh, right away and by just hitting revert, we're going back to the standard setup. And uh, we know that 900 millivolts is the maximum uh, cap that we have to work with. So instead of trying to reduce uh, the, the voltages, we can still have 900 and just increase the, the frequency. So for example, we can drag this up. Oh. Hold down shift, hit find the point and we can drag it up to for example um, let's say uh, 1800 and near 70 hit confirm and we can now see that we are achieving uh, around 1777 or yeah 1800 megahertz uh, using slightly less than 900 millivolts so this is the way uh, you will go ahead if you want to push the, the GPU to the maximum level uh, and don't care as much about reducing heat or, or noise levels. But um, the other setup that, that I have and that I really prefer, uh, I can just show you right away by finding it, is by not having a curve but rather a straight line. And uh, we can see uh, Currently we are drawing around 55 watts, we have a FPS of 60 um, and uh, when selecting this we do take a hit uh, in FPS, yeah, we went down from around 75 to 68, it's hard to compare uh, straight away, we can see some figures afterwards instead. But what's more important is that we have dropped the, the power consumption drastically from around 55, 54 watts down to 33. So a huge reduction in power consumption, which will also translate into lower fan speed and also lower temperatures. And uh, what this does more or less is that it will only ever draw the minimum amount that we're able to provide to it, which is 700 millivolts and it will um, do that whilst achieving a core clock of uh, 1425 megahertz so it will no, never go beyond this 
and um, this is actually the, the the main preferred setting that I have, uh, especially when playing games without headphones, which is uh, most of the time. Uh, I'm playing a lot of Valheim at the moment, and uh, I think this is a perfect setting for me, even though I, I actually run at the, the full resolution, uh, I just scale down some settings and uh, find a good FPS amount that I'm satisfied with and uh, I can just run it and it, the laptop will be very cool and quiet. Now the other thing to be looking at uh, in MSI Afterburner is memory clock and as you can see currently it's at zero so it's, it's at the base level and the base level for this setup is as previously mentioned uh, 1375 megahertz. However, the, the actual specification for the 3050 laptop model is 1500 megahertz. So we can increase this without, um, without risk because it, it's within spec. But uh, it does draw a bit more power. So I would suggest that you play around with this and uh, look at the performance differences that you see and find a level that you are comfortable with. Uh, and also do know that the, the megahertz that you input here will not translate into um, one for one to, to the clock speed. So for example, if we were to increase this by uh, 500 and I hit enter and then hit confirm, you will see that the memory clock will go up to 1500. So um, increasing it further to 800 so increased by 300 here, we can see that um, the, the frequency went up by 75. And uh, I found this memory to be fairly stable up to 1100 plus, which gives us 1650 megahertz. So, uh, no flaws, no artifacts. Uh, the, the main way to see when your memory bec becomes a bit unstable is that uh, you will not see stuttering at first, but rather artifacts. So small glimpses of pixels not behaving correctly. And if you continue to push it, you will come to a crash and then it will look something like uh, this. Again, nothing to worry about. We're not pushing uh, pushing anything beyond its bounds, bounds, just do it within reason and it will be fine. So um, these are the main recommendations that I have. Start with smaller increments uh, and just try your way down. Um, for example, when I did uh, these runs and I, I found my comfortable levels, I closed this one down, I opened the super precision uh, benchmark after that, I proceeded with doing Cyberpunk benchmark and also Shadow of the Tomb, Rom Tomb Raider benchmarks. Uh, I'm not playing them uh, currently, but rather just doing the benchmarks, just to see that they open up and run fine, is a good way of doing it without uh, having to spend too much time in it. Um, Witcher, uh, again, is also a great uh, program to be able to test stability and uh, you will find out fairly quickly, within 5 or 10 minutes, if the if the, the undervolting is stable or not. So test around with the games that you have, uh, make sure that they, it works properly and be prepared for crashes. Uh, again, it's fine, uh, just restart, uh, redo the settings, but slightly twe tweak it back so it's uh, giving more power. And so we come the to the benchmarks. These is benchmarks not as high are all as, run uh, with you CPU had it disabled set. in order to provide more GPU power. See my previous video for instructions on how to do this. The two GPU undervolt modes here are the go-to settings I have shown in this video with some slight changes to the GPU clock speeds. What is fairly amazing is that both of the undervolt modes surpasses the performance of stock in Cyberpunk despite having significantly less heat, up to 7 decibels lower fan noise and drawing up to 36% less power. Shadow of the Tomb Raider shows similarly positive results for the performance undervolt, whilst dropping slightly in the extreme power saving undervolt, but still a small decrease in comparison to how much less power it's using. When looking at Civilization 6, we are now back to having improvements across the board, despite the significantly lower power usage. So in short, amazing gains to be had just by playing around with the settings a little bit and I advise everyone to do this. 
Thank you very much for watching and please give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. See you all in the next one and take care.